Hey, beautiful people. Maybe we shouldn't say beautiful. Gluttons for punishment? Would that be a good thing? Would that be a fair thing to say? What are we going to do? We're going to try to walk over how everything's set up now, because recently I, like, replaced cables, audio cables, tons of them with, like, four different sound cards. Wiped all that out and replaced it with, like, uh, like, no joke, uh, Ethernet cables that were already present. So, uh, I'm going to upgrade them because of reasons, but still, it's simplified everything for getting all of our, you know, our two satellite boxes, our audio processing box, and our um, streaming rig all together collaborating over the network and basically eliminating any type of analog to digital conversion, which is really neat. So... Just to give you an idea of how that's put together, I hate to do this to you, but we got to go to shaky cam. It's going to be like a minute and a half, two minutes, something like that. And I'll give you like the thousand yard view of how everything's stuck together. So you'll know what's going on. Then we'll come back to the desktop and um, I'll walk you through how NetJack is tied in with these boxes and everything's routed back to Jackbox, which is back there in the corner, then all of that is routed to our thread ripping system and controlled via X over SSH because hard mode, baby, hard mode. Okay, shaky cam time. Okay, let's do this. We're zooming out, we're doing a thing. It's terrifying. Ah, uh, where do we start? Here? No, okay. Jack box is connected to the Jordan box and the Pedro box. Both of these are running uh, NetJack, NetJack 1. They don't have sound cards in them, either of them. We can switch over and then we'll show you the Jordan box. There's just a instance of Cadence running with NetJack tied into the Pulse Audio Jack bridge, which lets us use Chrome and all that. And over the network, just with a router that's tied into Jackbox, and Jackbox is tied into our digital interface. Over here, we can see the Threadripper and Jackbox. The one on the left is pulled in over SSH, if we look. The Threadripper is tied in with Pulse Audio as well, but this is Jackbox. You can see Outdoors doing the heavy lifting. That's coming in over SSH over our 10 gig link with the control surface, you know, it's a MIDI controller, so we can move all the dials and stuff without trying to do that with a mouse or keyboard, which is terrifying. But Adore lets us do our multi-track with um, automation, so we can effectively just go record that in real time if we need to make any small changes. That's also doable. Huge fan of the uh, X-Touch Compat. We could even switch banks if I need to get over to the buses or the auxins. And that's how I control the audio out to everyone because we have the mix minus setup. But we could do trim, all that fun stuff. All right. Uh, back to the spaghetti nightmare. You can see on the network that is... Thread booper. I don't know why I'm trying to show you this. Uh, there it is, kind of. Followed by Jordan, which is on the network. That is this box. And Pedro. So that gets tied and mixed in. That's Firewire. When you see that, that is this guy. The FCA 1616, where my audio comes in and game audio or system audio is left and right. And that's those three jacks with the preamp with my microphone. And all that gets routed to Threadripper um, along with the Optiplexes into our door. It really is straightforward once you get the plumbing done. But from our door, it sends two out. And that's what you'll see capture one and two. That's the main mix. So that goes into OBS, which we all know and love. And that's what you hear on the show. You know, it's a bit roundabout considering that the audio from the thread ripping box goes over the network through our door, then back into it. Um, this is just switching. You know, if you see me looking 
to my left. That that's what I'm doing. It's uh that's one of the Amazon Fire HD ten tablets. Get it for like ninety bucks. Does the job. Uh, what else? I think that is pretty much it. Okay, back to explanations. And we're back from shaky cam. That was brilliant. That was terrifying. A bit nauseating. I apologize for that. So, we've seen that these two boxes, um, they're running Jack with Net1, which, that's just NetJack1. And each one of these are running the Pulse Audio Jack Sync and Source. It's just a bridge that's available on everything. I mean, you can get it in the repos for Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora. It's there. You can find it. And what that does is it allows, for our particular use case, basically anything that is incapable of interfacing with Jack directly, which is most things, Firefox, music, it, well, you could do it. Uh, it's getting off topic. We use it for WebRTC, our Jitsi instances, and we use the input and output, which see the Pulse Audio Jack Sync and Source, and that does the translation of getting that into uh, capture and playback one and two. So once each of these boxes captures, you know, if Jordan's talking or Pedro's talking, it just stays digital and that's routed over to Jackbox, which is going to be processed with Ardor. Let's see. Let's take a look at how that looks. We'll go. This is Jackbox. This is Katia. It is pulled up. You'll see Ardor, we'll get to that in a moment, is doing the heavy lifting. It's doing all the routing. So you can see what's connected. This is Pedro's box. We have playback and capture, which is the audio coming out and the audio coming into the box. Same thing with Jordan. Audio coming out, audio coming in. That is just so we can talk back and forth to each other and they can hear everything that's being broadcast. And uh, third on the list is Threadbooper, which is this window to the right. Threadbooper has the main mix coming out. That's these two coming into playback. That is just the mix down left and right from all the channels and everyone being captured. And it has a third playback. I'll explain that in just a moment because you'll see playback playback three is in and out. There's a reason for this. And outside of that, we have the hardware interface, which is, you know, 16 in, 16 out, Firewire interface what's coming in through here is mic one two and three which is my microphone and number one two and three are system music you know anything that i'm playing music wise game audio or anything to the, that effect that is coming in and getting routed out so everyone can hear it and it makes its way into the final mix so you will see uh playback one and two when we come here turns in that would be capture one and two, which go to the Jack input client, also known as OBS. I've just never renamed it. And that sends the final mix to that. Now we'll see we have Pulse Audio on the thread ripping box. The reason we have that is for Discord in after, for after shows or if we're doing live and we're bringing people in. This is just doing a Pulse Audio sync that from here will be just the left and right audio out of Discord. We'll go into playback three, which gets captured, you'll see from Threadbooper, and it runs in, gets processed so everybody can hear everyone and all that fun stuff. And the output of that will just come out, capture three into Pulse Audio Jack Source. Now, it that's just coming in, that's going out. It's simple as that. It's mixed down to one channel from stereo. Not much to it. Uh, but again, this is all over the network now. We're not dealing with physical cables. So let me show you this odd door. And I, I guess let me show you the configuration with Jack. You can see the Net1 driver 
It's at 4800, 128. Let's get the periods locked down. And that's what we run everything at. It's block latency 2.7 across the network. And if the readings are to be believed, our um, round trip latency is 60 milliseconds. All right. Um, this is order. I call it Ardor, but even the author is like, it's called Ardor, and that, that sounds weird. This gives us a couple of cool tricks. This is our multi-track recording. This, what we're looking at right now is uh, weekly, daily, Wednesdays, 174, I believe. And we have everything working now. It's recording with automation. I'll explain that in a minute. But... This is our individual audio. That's my audio, Jill's audio, Pedro's audio, and, you know, music at the end. Or anytime we'd want to bring that in and we have room for the Discord or eventually we'll get the guest. We're, we almost got everything pinned down, so that's going to become a possibility. And with automation, we will take a look at... Let me... I think I have it in touch. We have control over... Any changes, see if I go back, go back up, go back down, that'll change that. And same thing with mute. Now, all of the curves that you're seeing here are recorded live. You know, mine's flat. I've made a couple of changes and Joe going up and down and all that. And Pedro's is pretty flat. This is neat. Because you can record those curves, uh, you know, you'd be in a right mode to do that. And you can do trim support, mute, you know, I just have mute and fader. And that writes, this is being recorded, but if I need to go back and change any of that, it, it it's as simple as just, you know, making a change to any particular curve, which is really neat and really handy. Um... And it can save you a lot of time. It's effectively time travel. So I am very happy with that. So when we are recording, let me bring up the mixer. Hopefully I'll be able to zoom in on this in post. If not, in begin. This is what it's looking like now. You'll see only one Firewire PCM is coming in. So routing grid. You can see I'm just coming in over mic one. And the other two hardwired connections are Firewire PCM coming in through music. And that will be effectively left and right, so in two and three. And that's it. Everything else is network. I, I can flip them around. You'll notice if you watch the first video that I did way back when, like two months ago, everything was just coming in over Firewire because everything had cables and it was wired in. It was doing analog digital conversions. And I was missing a separate um, input, a strip for Jill. I was just doubled up Jordan Jill. So now everything's programmed to run in. If we take a look at the routing grid now, you'll see there's the Pedro box, there's the Jordan box, and there's Thread Booper with all the available channels running in. And same thing with, you'll see to the right, uh, I said in the shaky cam video, this is just aux return if you're familiar with um, like FX and mix minus. So, you know, when I'm talking, you can see you know, th this is coming in and coming out. That is going out to everyone. But if Jordan was talking, his audio would be going out to everyone except him. And same with Pedro. Pedro, if he's talking, his audio goes out to everyone but him. So you don't hear yourself back. You don't get that like echo delay. And we don't have to rely on echo cancellation through software, which cannot work very well sometimes. And this last one... Which is, okay, fair enough, that is Firewire PCM. Um, that's a hardware out because that is my route for monitoring everybody, including myself, in real time. 
So that just comes out of just um, two output channels on the hardware mixer and runs into our analog mixer, which I have wired up just for direct monitoring when I tap a track. It works really neat. Uh, it lets me keep track of, um, like, when we're doing streams. I remember way back when, um, one thing that really killed me was getting our volume. You know, if it was me, Jordan, Pedro, Sandy, Mike, anybody. And then we had game audio and I was like trying to eyeball it on waveform and decibel because it, it you could kind of get it right, but you never really knew. This was back in the olden times using direct, direct monitoring. Now, the reason I did it this way is because I get the direct monitoring with all the effects, you know, with the gate, noise repellent, calf mono, de and all that fun stuff. Most interfaces, even this one, even the one I sent Jordan, has a direct monitoring um, where you can just plug right in and you can hear everything and mix as desired. Then you don't have to try to listen to your stream because everything that you're hearing here is, is what's going on. And you do have to keep your latency like your block latency, you really want it like around 128, 64, maybe. Uh, so you don't end up having a delay in hearing yourself. All right. So let me show you some of the cool things. Um, we are doing our gating, our compressing, and our DSing digitally now. We have a piece of kit in the rack that did most of that. But I did, I'm just trying to get rid of it. I'm trying to simplify. This, this is going to be something you can do at home. The gate is what you would expect with a gate. Is it, it's your standard noise gate. You have, you know, your threshold, your ratio, and any type of makeup. You don't really need to worry about that. And you can adjust the knee on how hard it comes in. Usually your default settings brilliant with this this calf studio plugins this this is just available in pretty much anything and you can see it operate not talking and as soon as i do talk the you can see the gate rolling off and that's good this way i can hammer on the mouse tap on the desk um can't really tap dance but that's a different story noise repellent we'll get to it in a minute Everyone's going to enjoy that if you don't know about it. Then we have mono compression. If you're familiar with how compression works, you can set your curve to, you know, well, let's start with your threshold. Do you want it to go above unity, below unity? And that's just how loud it can get. It's not a brick wall. It will gradually, if I go, ah, and you can see the reduction, it'll give you your gain reduction so you don't end up blowing people's ears out. So, you know, you would set this to where you would want everyone to be. And you're like, okay, you can see how loud you're going to get. Then you want to bring the quiet parts up, and that's what you can do with your makeup gain. Once you have your makeup gain put in, you, you can get much louder, and which I, I don't want to do. And of course, you have input. You don't want to mess with that. You want to do your input um, coming into it or going out. What else do we have? DSing, which is hiding. Come here, DSer. Way over there. Different monitor. Um, semblance. That's what this does, which is good. A, this microphone, even with the uh, roll off effect it can do in hardware. The interface picks up a lot of semblance. That's just the thing with the FCA 1660. You can get that when I get It's killing it. Um, just doing gain reduction on that. You can program these. And that's another feature that is available in hardware. But it's nice to have to dial it in for myself, for Jordan, for Jill, and for Pedro individually. So we're not just working with, like, one thing. Um, okay. I promised you something cool. Okay, well, let's see. This is just our aux channels. That's aux which goes to aux which goes out to everyone but me. Then 
all that. The one at the bottom is monitor mix, which is this one that is constantly bouncing around, which is just my return. Same thing with that. Okay. Uh, how do we want to do this? Okay. All right. This is, this is a cool thing. This is a compressor because I can't read. Noise repellent. I want to give everyone a demo of this. So, hopefully everything will play nice. This is all coming over SSH um, via X. So, it can get a little stabby. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go cut. I have one of those wall units, the podcasting wall air conditioner to help compensate for all the computers. You see them very often in people's background shots. And then we're going to reprogram this thing. So I'm going to reset the noise profile and disable it. Now, hang on one moment while I go cut on the AC and it should get loud in here. I don't think the... Let me kill the gate, too. Can you hear that? Hear that in the background? So, what this does is... If you're familiar with noise removal... It will... Do that, but in real time. Real time-ish. I mean, it'll add... A second, not a second, but you know, we're talking like little microseconds. Uh, so we have the noise profile and we have all that background noise. So somebody calls in or, you know, somebody has AC running, crackle, as long as it's a steady, regular pattern, we can just tell it to learn the noise profile. Which it's doing right now. And... Um, I just use defaults. This thing's uh, really clever because... Yep. There we go. See, now that's a bit much. Let's see. Oh, right, right, right. Hang on. Ha. I, I like this effect. It's because I was talking. All right, let me shut up for a minute. Take two. Okay, beautiful people, now we should have something... Now, it's not perfect, but you could take a situation. This is a very bad situation. That is an air, air compressor going um, brrr, constantly, where you would not be able to use that audio, especially in a live situation, which is what we're doing, recording live. But it's able to, you know, just take it from that to what we have in the background there to... It's not a bad piece of kit. I'm real happy about that. Um, there are other um, with plugins that you could do for live plugins. I had a category that you can make yourself sound like a helium balloon on crack or um, a Quahold from Stargate. There's equalization, reverb effects. You know, we even have a reverb effect for the Steam update of the week and all that fun stuff. Um, but then that's kind of it. I'll give you an idea. Let's just uh, let's blow this away. Like if I was going to be doing uh, recording, we don't need these tracks. Let's get my gate back on. Mm mm mm. And let's boop that over. So let's say I was recording myself. I won't need to put my 
fader into right for automation. Then we could get a look at what's going on. Going to get big in this. Thought I was. I'm trying to zoom in. I may be doing it backwards. No, all right. There we go. You can see your basic automation. It's writing those curves for you. One thing I do want to recommend is adjusting that, uh, the resolution for your reading and writing in Odor because it's set wicked high, which you don't really need. I mean, you can do some like broadsword automation. So if you could get all that together, uh, so that's definitely a thing. Uh, what do we have? Undo, undo. Okay. Now we're back to like a full set of weekly daily Wednesdays from beginning to end. So we're getting ready to export this. This is, this is good. This is very handy. Um, so with this, with the session, you have uh, two options. You just have your audio files, and which is going to give you a nice big mix, where you have um, stem export. So we've recorded everything in 32 float uh, BWF, you know, your standard WAV files. What you might want to do is pop over to your edit if you wanted to normalize it. You can do that. You can set your loss. Uh, 23 would be high. I'd use like 17, 16 to 17 on a podcast if I was using this, but as is not something I typically use. So I don't normalize anything. Then you have your time span. That's where your end marker would be. It's easy enough to set that. You can add another format if you want to go out with a couple of things. And from there, um, you have your option to pick your buses. So if I just wanted to put mine out and, but then again, this is going to give you an individual file for each of these tracks. It's going to be a WAV file. Now by default, it's just going to be a raw recording. It's not going to have anything in it. But if I wanted to make sure that I had all of the effects from the compression to the gate to the noise removal I'm using right now to run that AC in the background, just make sure that's clicked and click export and boom, you're done. That'll, you know, at the end of this file, I'll have a, I'd have a track for me, a track for Jill, a track for Pedro, and a track for music. Then just be WAV files. And, and from there, I just pull that nonsense into um, Audacity, clean it up a little bit. Usually I don't have to do anything to it, chop the ends and, uh, mix it down to a two-channel stereo. That's it. And take that, pull it into DaVinci, sync it with a video, and export that, and make an MP3 from that. But that's it. That was longer than I was expecting it to be, let's be honest. Uh, hopefully that was educational. I always like to say that. I always hope that like somebody watches this, because I'll get to watching things, especially on YouTube or going down rabbit holes, and I'll see that one little thing. I'm like, wait a minute, that's possible. Boom. And I'll take that little bit of information and create something completely unrelated to it. But it was that one thing, and it's like, wait, okay, that's cool. So that's where we're at right now in coming up on July 2019. We got the two optiplexes, we got the thread booper, which is operating excellently and we have the repurposed jackbox or audio pro that's a tip maybe i want to throw that in there i tried to fight against it if you're going to be using jack for any type of serious processing like multi-track dedicated box this one's a ryzen 1700 it was our old box of business 16 gigs of ram laptop will work you can get away with it just don't run i mean this is a headless box and disable frequency scaling do that or you're going to have a bad time. Make sure you have a low latency kernel installed. Do that or you're going to have the bad time. And do yourself a favor. Um, if you can, 
When it comes to interfaces, like a multi-track interface, I recommend the HD404. I sent it to Jordan. He's scared of it right now. He, he's got to learn to love it. And Pedro's eventually going to get one too. Those are great. They're about 104 bucks uh, USB. If you can find one, use Firewire. Even under Linux, you can get a card, TI chipset. It'll just save you so much time with like dealing with X run, X runs or anything like that. But USB works, it gets the job done. RTIRQ, real time IRQ, make sure you get that installed, configured correctly, and jack's easy. With the network stuff, I'll probably be doing a video, hopefully in July, about how everything is set up and connected. You know how Jackbox connects. It's basically it's starting Jack and it's launching three instances because the way NetJack 1 works of NetJack with, you know, IPs, it's like, hey man, go to 104, go to 109, and uh, go to 10 on the 10 gig network, which when these start, it's like, hey, I'll connect to you when they sync up. Then we'll maybe, one thing I, I definitely want to do an auto or a clean slate. I got to do that for Jordan. Show him. Which I'm sure he can figure it out. I just want to like, put it on easy mode. I'm one of those things where you can fast forward and be like, oh, wait a minute. That's how I set up Mixed Mind. And maybe you're podcasting or looking into doing like live recording. Because that's where I come from, is knowing how to do this with live recording. And just applying this to Jack and our setup. Cool. All right. I have to go herd cats and see if we can get a team together to play some video games uh, tonight. Until next time, Dynafire.